something that's been added uh, not too long ago to the DOM is the ability to track mutations or changes that take place in the DOM. So our document object model, the DOM, that is how the browser views all the content inside your HTML, the elements, the text nodes, the attributes, character data. That's what this is right here. This is an example of some character data. This is a way to add uh, preformatted content that will ignore special characters. So we can make changes using JavaScript to anything inside the page, to elements, attributes, text, whatever we want. Now the mutation observer is something that we're going to use to track when changes take place. So in my script, what I've done here is I've declared a global variable called observer. I'm going to use this to hold my mutation observer. When the page finishes loading, when the HTML finishes loading, I'm calling this function init. Inside of here, I'm putting an event listener on the first paragraph. It's going to be a click listener. So when I click on this, I want to call a function and I'm going to make some changes in that HTML. So I'll, I'll experiment. I'll make some changes to the attributes, to the text. I'll add child nodes and so on. Now, I want to track when those changes take place. So the way we do it is these two lines right here. We create a new mutation observer and we pass in the function that we want to call. This is our callback function. When the changes take place, and every time the changes take place, until we say otherwise, this function is going to be called. We will set it up so that this callback is inside the object, and then we're going to call the observe method, saying which element we want to observe. So p, that's my variable up here for that first paragraph. That's what I'm going to observe. And these are the conditions under which I'm going to observe it. That's what this config object is. So we have all of these potential attributes that we can put in this, or properties that we can put inside this object. We can do any combination of these. We have to at least have one of these three, child list attributes and character data. One of those three have to be in there, but beyond that, any combination that you want. So attributes, this is, do you want to check track changes made to the attributes? So if there's a change to the existing title attribute that we have up here in the HTML. So if a change gets made to that, do we want to track it? Or if a new attribute gets added, or if an existing one gets removed, do we want to track it? That's what this option's about. Attribute old value, do you want to be able to access what it used to be as well as what it is now? If you want to be able to track the old one, then you have to set the old value property to true. There's one of these also for character data, character data old value. Um, attribute filter. If there's specific attributes that you want to watch, not just a carte blanche, the any attribute that exists, if there's specific ones, you can add an array here and say, these are the ones that I'm going to look at. Now, these last two right here, child list and subtree, they're somewhat related. Child list is anything inside of that paragraph tag that we're observing right here. That includes the text nodes or any child nodes, child elements that I add. If I add more text nodes, if I add um, a span or an anchor tag inside of it, that's what the child list is. And subtree is, do you want to go further than just the children, the, the contents inside of that paragraph tag, that one level, or do you want to go deeper? And that's what the subtree lets us do. So with these things set up, I call observe saying, watch the paragraph. These are the options I'm going to use. The mutation observer already has the callback function. And then when it gets called, you get past a mutation list object. So this is, it's basically an array. It's a list of all the changes that have been made to this element that you're watching based on these conditions that you provided. So this configuration with this element, this is the list of changes that have just taken place. So I'm just going to do a loop through that. If the mutation type is child list, we know that, okay, something inside has been added, a text node or another element has been added or removed. Uh, if the mutation type is attributes, that means that 
something's been changed with the attributes. So we can look at attribute name to see which one was changed. There's also all these other properties. So these, this mutation object, this is a list of mutation objects. The, or I think they're called mutation records, actually. Each one of those records will give you a target property. That's the element. That's the paragraph. Add nodes or remove nodes. If that happened, you'll be given a node list. So you'll be given a list of the nodes that were added or removed. Old value for attributes. The attribute name. If there's a namespace with the attribute, you'll be given. If any of these um, are not something that exists, the value of these will all be null. Uh, next and previous sibling, that's pretty typical for any HTML uh, element that you've got. And then the type, like I was tracking here, is either going to be attributes or child list. Okay, so that's the options. Let's just do a quick little experiment to see it in action. So inside of changed, I think I'm tracking pretty much everything except for character data here. So we'll make a change. Let's change the text content of this paragraph. When we click on it, we want to change the text content. Uh, right now, refresh, I click on here, absolutely nothing is happening when I click because there's no changes taking place. What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to uh, change the text content. So let's do that. Text content equals this is new content. There we are. So refresh, click here, content was changed, and we got back a mutation record. So this mutation list property was being console logged out. If I open that up, we can see that there's only one number zero mutation record. And inside, here's all those properties that I was talking about. So child list, removed nodes. So there was a comment and the text. The comment, that's the character data. And the text, that was the existing text. And added nodes, text. So that was this new content that we added in. Great, that one worked. Uh, let's quickly do an attribute one. So we'll say p.setAttribute. We'll create one called data thing. Give it a value of one, two, three. Uh, yep, yeah, that's in our list of possible ones up here. Click again. There, now we've got two coming in. The child node has been added or removed, and the data thing attribute was modified. Again, we can go and look at these. There's the type, child list, and attributes. Uh, and you can do as many changes if you, as you want. If you want to add a span or an anchor tag or something like that inside there, we can do that. So let span equal document create element span span dot we'll set the text content there's some text make it all caps so it stands out and then we will append it to the paragraph there we are refresh click and there it is there's the new content and here's the new span that was added so now we have three changes taking place. This is the one where we changed the text. So we removed the comment and the text. And then we added, this is the new content. Then we changed the attribute. And then we changed by adding the span. And there's that third one. Added nodes, node lists, span. Great. So that all worked just fine for us. So we have all these changes. Um, Yeah, as I was saying earlier, we can set things to false. So I'm setting child list and subtree to false. So I've changed my configuration here to say that I don't care about changes to the child list and the subtree. Now, the only thing that should show up is the attributes data thing. And let's go in here and we'll add another line console.log mutation dot old value. Let's see if we can get that to come up as well. Oh, we didn't change that one. Yeah, we'll have to change the uh, the title one. p.title equals new title. There we are. Now we've made the change to the attribute. We click. Two changes made. Let's take a look. Scroll this up. 
first one attributes name was data thing. That's the first one that we did in our code. Old value was null because it didn't exist before. Not getting an error, it's null. It did not have a value previously. And then in the second one, title, old value was mouse over text. The new value was some span, or sorry, new title. So mouse over text was the old original text. If we come back up here, sure enough, there it is, mouse over text. All right, and that's the mutation observer. Um, oh, two last comments here. Uh, disconnect. The disconnect method will uh, stop tracking changes. So if I clear this out, I click again. I'm clicking again and again and again. Nothing's coming up here because I'm not making changes. If we got rid of this line, if we refresh, click, there's the first time, click again, there's the second time. This disconnect says, all right, stop observing the element that you're observing with this observer. The other alternative is you can call this at any point, take records. This will give you a, um, like if you don't care about the callback, if you're not doing everything in the callback, you can also do take records, which will give you the array of all the changes that have taken place so that you can, uh, it'll empty out the observer so there'll be nothing left inside. It'll just give you an array of everything that's happened to that element. All right. So that's everything. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.